content director Vinny Driscoll, and on this episode, I am joined by Mitch Silver, Vice President of Marketing and Sales at Printable Promotions, to discuss QR codes, what they are, how they work, and why we're seeing a resurgence, and much more. We'll also have a little fun at the end of the podcast to tell a few dad jokes. Mitch, welcome to the 100th episode of The Social Angle. Vinny, congratulations. 100 is a big number, and uh, I'm honored to be here as number 100. Thank you for having me. You will always be remembered for your your knowledge and being the 100th guest on The Social Angle. So how are things out in Chicago today? Good. Uh, the sun is out, and uh, being an East Coaster like yourself, you're going to get that sun tomorrow. So uh, have something to look forward to. Yeah, we have a good weekend on tap uh, weather-wise in the 70s, but next week is going to be back in the 50s. I'm like, what's going on here? Like, bring on this consistent 70-degree weather. Uh, it's cold today. It's been cold all week, so I'm looking In honor to of Earth Day thing. tomorrow, I think I need to say it's probably global warming related, but just a hunch. There you go. All right. So, again, we are talking to Mitch Silver of Printable Promotions. And, Mitch, before we get started with our topic, which is QR codes, can you tell us a little bit about yourself uh, and how you found yourself in the promo industry. Sure, Vinny. Um, I have always loved music. Uh, in my childhood bedroom, I had posters of Journey and Rush and Van Halen and Squeeze and The Police. And uh, when I got to college at the University of Illinois in Champaign here in, Ch in Illinois uh, in the late 1980s, I decided to parlay that love of music into a money-making venture. And I started a mobile DJ service called Music Madness. Um, so using records and CDs, and I, and I even had cassettes, uh, I played songs like Just Like Heaven by The Cure and Bizarre Love Triangle by New Order and It Takes Two by Rob Bass and In Your Eyes by Peter Gabriel more times than I care to count. But over the course of paying my way through college, I amassed a huge list of social chair people um, and, and residence halls and fraternities and people that were in charge of planning social events that were hiring me for uh, DJ services. And uh, I didn't have them in my Palm Pilot. There was no Palm Pilot. I didn't have them in my phone. There was no phone. So I had a bunch of post-it notes up on the wall uh, in my in my uh, apartment. And uh, it was just about that time that my younger brother, Scott, who's a couple years younger, said to me, hey, I'm thinking of starting a business. Uh, you got any ideas for me? And I said, well, I looked at my wall and I had a ton of post-it notes. And I said, why don't you call some of these social chair people and sell them something? So sure enough, he did. He began selling boxers and t-shirts and shot glasses uh, and all those things were to college students. And he called his business Party Madness as, you know, Music Madness, Party sure. Madness. Um, Scott did well enough to continue the business after college. And while I was finishing up my master's degree, I then worked for six years as a change management consultant. I was crisscrossing the country, helping large companies with software integrations and conducting employee training. And all that travel got really old pretty quickly. And Scott said, you know what? I'm thinking of growing the business and doing away with the students and focusing on the corporate. So I joined him. We changed the name from Party Madness to Printable Promotions. We dropped the focus uh, to be more, uh, to make it more college, or sorry, more corporate focused. And 25 years later, here I am. That's awesome. You, so your background, you wanted to do music because I'm the same way. I went into journalism to be a magazine journalist, love music. Um, probably read every Rolling Stone from 1985 until, God, 1997. So, I mean, I was really big into the music scene as well. Um, it, uh, it's amazing. Yeah, and I love the fact, I love hearing stories about how people got into promo. And, you know, every everybody I ask the same question, they, they always have a really cool story. Um, but that one's really good because I have that connection with music. So, uh, yeah. you know, sorry you didn't find your way into, you know, making money in the in the music industry. But, you know, this is certainly a great industry to it's be the next in best well. thing, right? Yeah, for sure. So, again, we're talking uh, QR codes today uh, with Mitch Silver of Printable Promotions. So, Mitch, I want to tell you real quick that last week I posted a poll on LinkedIn, uh, the page I was at, asking people, the following question, um, would you consider using QR codes for your business? Now, we got almost 200 responses, which is a really wow. good number. Uh, so th this is how the numbers kind of uh, played out. I already do. So 42% of people said they already use QR codes for their business. And then right behind that, 41% of people said they would definitely consider using QR codes. And then with 9%, nope, no interest. And then 8%, I doubt it. So it seems like judging by these results that there is a lot of interest in QR codes. And I think that's kind of why we're having this conversation today. So 
Um, for those who don't know, can you explain what a QR code is and how it's used for business? Sure. Um, so we typically think of QR codes as pretty a, a recent sort of uh, development and evolution, but actually they were founded back in 1994. They were originally used by a Japanese automaker to sort of keep track of parts as they were going through the manufacturing process. Uh, and of course, today we use it as a shorthand way of communicating and redirecting someone uh, to a web page or some other document or some location on the internet. Um, you simply point your phone at the QR code and the, that web page opens. It's incredibly convenient. Um, and QR codes are 100% free to create. Anybody can do them. Uh, just go into your Google machine and type in QR code generator uh, and you'll see lots of free options. Um, now, if someone wasn't previously aware of QR codes before the pandemic, they certainly are aware of them now. Um, with the resurgence of touchless transactions, um, it seems like QR codes were brought back from the dead. Uh, most prominently, people probably saw them at restaurants when they were doing carry out or ordering in. Uh, and most restaurants have a menu with the QR code so they don't have to have paper or plastic menus for people to touch and retouch. So that's yeah. where we are today. Yeah, so we're, we're going to get into that a little bit. I'll, I'm going to back up a little bit and ask you, um, you know, you said that they're completely free to create. Now, are there, there there's different kinds of versions of QR codes. There are QR codes that I know, um, you know, that you create once and you can't change them. Um, the static QR codes. Now, there's dynamic ones as well that you can you can update. So if you have a, a business and you have a menu and something is off, the, you know, something you ran out of, you can just update that menu and you don't have to update the QR code. The QR code is automatically updated right. dynamically. So are those free as well, or is it just the static ones? You know, it's my understanding that, you know, we, we've always done for marketing purposes, both internally at Printable Promotions and recommended to our clients, ones where it's a static code that goes to a fixed page. Now, if they ever wanted to modify that page, it would simply be modifying the website itself. The QR code would still sure. direct to that same site. So that's okay, yeah, Yeah, so uh, to me, I feel like there's, they're evolving and they're becoming, you know, multifaceted. Uh, so, you know, depending on your needs, you know, I think there's probably different ways that you can create them. So, you know, like you said, just go and search on Google uh, and you'll be able to find a QR code creator. Okay. So back to what you said normal or earlier, um, you know, we we're talking about QR codes. It seems like a decade or a dozen years ago, they were, they were hot for like, you know, a second. You know, I remember at ASI, you know, we were tinkering, tinkering with them. I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. But then it was kind of clunky. Um, they faded away almost into obscurity. Now they're experiencing a huge resurgence. And, I, you know, you can kind of speak to that in a second. But what happened in a decade for such a turnaround? Well, Vinny, I don't know about you, but I really thought QR codes died a few years ago. I actually really, truly thought it went by the way of the Betamax or the 8-track player. And just, I don't know, I didn't know what happened to it. Um, by the way, speaking of 8-track player, quick shout out to my industry friend, Danny Rosen, whose company Brand Fuel has an 8-track player in their showroom. That's there's awesome. Nothing, there's nothing cooler than that. Um, years ago, and I think we probably all remember this, is you know you used to have a special app on your phone mm. that you would download to be able to read QR codes. So if you came across a QR code that you wanted to find more information about, you had to first open the app, then open your phone then do it and then be directed to it. So it was pretty cumbersome. I mean, I think we can all agree that that's not the most efficient way to do things. Um, but then in 2017, something happened that was really a game changer for QR codes. Um, iOS, the operating system for Apple, 11 came out. And I'm not sure what the Android equivalent was. But at that time, the operating systems then allowed us to use our phones to be able to read QR codes. All you had to do is pull out your phone, point it, click on a button, and then it opened up right away. So, um, boom! It's a pretty quick, uh, it's a quite, pretty quick process. Process these days, um, much like any other technology, I think removing the friction was the key. Sure, right? that was the key to the mass adoption. Um, just the other day in Chicago, I was on the uh, elevated train platform, and there was a QR code, you know, across the platform on a billboard, and I just literally picked up my phone, pointed it at it, and it opened up. I was right. like, this is unbelievable. Like, what more could you ask for than something that frictionless? So um, do you have any suggestions on what might have maybe prompted the resurgence? Well, to me, I feel like, um, like you said, like the removal of having the app, I think was a very big part of it. Because when I, we were playing around with these in 2010, 2012, um, we had to download the app, right? And I just right. remember goofing around with it, trying to get these things to work. You had to like, you know, open up the app and you had to hover over and you had to get it perfectly in the square. It wasn't like it is now. Like the, the camera phones, they're very 
they're very good. You know, they just as soon as you get it focused in, boom, they open up the window. The apps were so hard, you had to get it in this square, right? Right. Too much friction. People didn't want to mess around with that, and I think that's how they. That's the reason why they died. And then the pandemic. You know, you you kind of mentioned that earlier. The pandemic has kind of, you know, pushed QR codes, the need for QR codes, to the forefront. We you know we talked about. Uh, frictionless, you know, menus, going to restaurants. The other day I was in DC, um, went down for a war ceremony. I was with my wife. We went out to breakfast the next morning and we went to this highly suggested place and in, built right into the actual tables. Like it was, they were actually in the tables were the QR codes for the menus. You, you could do everything without having any, the only human contact that we had at this restaurant was them bringing us our food. We did everything. We ordered, we paid everything through this QR code. And I was like, yes, this is, this is perfect. Now my wife, who is more of a, a foodie than I am, she's like, she likes to talk to the waiters and say, what do you recommend? I was, mm -hmm. I'm the opposite. I'm like, no, get me in, get me out. I don't want to have to deal with that. She's like, oh, QR codes are so impersonal. I was like, no, no. It's like, this is what I love about QR codes, especially during a pandemic, you don't have to touch anything, you don't have to interact with anyone. So to me, I feel like a couple things. You mentioned the frictionless way that the, um, you know, the, the smartphones have now allowed the cameras to just really pick up those QR codes without an app. That's a game changer. Um, and the pandemic. So we, ha we actually have uh, a couple of comments here. Uh, Kelly Byrne says, yes, it's become so much easier to just use my Android camera instead of an app. Yes, Kelly, we, we both agree that that has been huge for the success of QR codes. Um, and we have somebody who must be a fan of you here, Mitch. <laughs> Stacy hi, Stacey. Felice. She says, hi, Mitch. <laughs> and then Kelly Byrne also has a suggestion um, for her favorite QR code. She has a... Um, a link in there so if you want to check it out in the comments um all right so so mitch let's talk about qr codes and their practical application in our industry how are you seeing them play out in promo you know that's a good question Vinny. i mean qr codes really have offer an advantage over traditional media you know we think of radio we think of tv we even think of billboards on which most of the people that place those ads really just are making educated hunches as to how many people have seen a promotion but when you pair a QR code with a tangible gift like we focus on in our industry, like the results become trackable and the ROI is measurable to see how many people actually engage with that QR code. I mean, that's every marketer's dream, right? So I think our medium has a huge advantage when you think about the industry as a whole and how it could differentiate itself from other forms of advertising. Um, but right now, there's some really, really clever people in our industry. I mean, our industry is doing really clever things with QR codes. Um, the good folks over at Chocolate Inn launched one of the industry's most fun and innovative products last year. It's called Smash Chocolate. Have you heard about this, Vinny? No, I have not. So Let's the concept here is they make like a custom 3D molded piece of chocolate, like a heart or a champagne bottle. And that mold is then filled with another piece of candy, like a, like a gummy bear or um, a non-parel or candy hearts or something like that. Then here's where the promo piece comes in you get a printed mallet that's like a metal mallet. And I've seen people put QR codes in those and you use the mallet to break apart the chocolate. You smash the chocolate okay. and then you get access to all the other candy that's inside. So it's an interactive marketing sure. piece. Um, so the hammer is a flat surface, which is perfect surface for QR codes. So if you put something in there, I put a QR code in there, like you could have, for example, um, the QR code leads to a press release about a hospital smashing a healthcare milestone, right? So oh. tying in the smashing word. Um, or the smash chocolate could also be used like a pre-mailer with a QR code for like a sales event or like a president's club trip where, you know, looking forward to smashing our goals together sure. in 2023, like that sort of thing. So another great example of QR codes, I I'm very fortunate. I get a lot of great mailings from suppliers. Um, I just got one the other day from Maple Ridge Farms. Ooh, yes. And in my opinion, they totally hit it out of the park with this baseball themed food mailer, had some really clever uses of QR codes. I saw it. Yeah. But I, I, I actually have, I have some show and tell. Do you want to actually yeah, see Yeah, let's it? see it. Yeah, absolutely. All right, here. Okay. So hold on. Let me pull this over here. All right. So first I got this card that was included mm -hmm. and um, Vinny, it's filled with baseball puns. 
I, when I, the yeah. bases are loaded, you can call in your pinch hitter to get the grand slam. That's us. So this QR code, I was I didn't know where it was going to lead. There was a little bit of reference, but I wasn't quite right, sure. Right. But when I clicked on it, it went to a case study page that they had set up on their website filled with ideas of how to use their products in virtual promotions and in-person awesome. promotions, that sort of thing. So that was great. I thought that was awesome. But it gets better. Ooh, okay. Included also were some cards from some of the key yes. players on their teams. You may have yes. seen this already. And on the back, they had QR codes. So what would your assumption be? Like, where do you think these QR codes are going to go? Mm. Well, I, I thought they were just going to go to the same place as the other one. I thought they were just kind of repeating sure. the whole case study thing. But no, I was really surprised and delighted where these went. They had actually taken the time to create a Spotify playlist of songs about baseball. That is awesome. That's really cool. It was brilliantly executed. Hats off to them. I mean, I think this surprise and delight way of not letting people know where the QR code goes was just a really awesome touch. Yeah, there's a there's a um, there's an intrigue factor there. It's like, where does this go? You know, like what is this going to open? And you know, I know a bunch of people over at uh, Maple Ridge Farms. I know Molly's a big uh, yeah. Brewers fan, and I have a feeling that she was behind this. But th <laughs> but there are some really really um, clever uses of. Um, QR codes right there. Do you have any other ones that you want to share? Oh, God, I have so many. Uh, you, should we cover them? Okay. Yeah, let's um, do another one. All right. So I, I have to say, you know, in a world where instant gratification, where boredom is banished with a swipe of a finger, you know, nowadays we can't just be good marketers. We need to be good entertainers, right? And I mm -hmm. think this is a good example we saw from Maple Ridge. You know, with that in mind, our company, Printable Promotions, created a self promo piece that featured QR codes to show off our ability to help clients with experiences in a box with their virtual events. So we promoted a fictitious conference called, you ready? Okay, here we go. Oh, the Dad Jokes Conference. I love it. It never actually existed, but we created this fictional, fictitious conference so people could get a sense of how we could use products in a virtual way. And we actually used QR codes in a couple different ways inside the box. So first we had this poly mailer that was included. And inside the poly mailer was a hat that said Dad Strong on it. Ooh, nice. Um, is it the a dad, it's thing a is dad that, hat too. A dad, a dad hat, dad right? Dad hat, of course. I mean, Ties in perfectly. Had to be, yeah. I have an extra one I can send you to, by the way. Nice. So here's a QR code. Um, we also put one on this jigsaw puzzle that we included. And guess what they have to do to find the QR code? Put the puzzle together. Assemble the puzzle, right. In nice. both of both of those, actually, by the way, we also did one other interesting thing. This is not QR code specifically, but um, this is a spine of a journal from Spectre. Okay. It's embedded with an NFC chip near field communication. Okay. So you hold your phone up to it and it automatically opens up a site. Oh, nice. Okay. And all three of those things went to the same location. We had actually commissioned someone to perform a comedy short in honor of our dad jokes conference. And that's where, where the QR code led to. So definitely looking for ways to keep it interactive um, and fun. I have other examples too, but you want to move on? It's a Yeah. I mean, we could probably talk about it all day and, you know, it's, one of those unfortunate things, I got a three o'clock, you know, I got to attend that. But anyway, um, we no have problem. some more questions. Again, I'm talking to Mitch Silver uh, of Printable Promotions, and we are talking QR codes today. Mitch just gave some great examples of how QR codes are being used in our industry. So let, Mitch, let me ask you, what are some print guidelines that distributors should keep, keep in mind when creating artwork for QR codes? Yeah, that's a really good thing. I mean, a good question, because honestly, QR codes are really designed to be more... Um, originally digitally printed on paper. So methods that we use in our industry so often like silk screening won't always produce the precise image definition that you really need to work on a QR code reader. Um, from my experience, our industry vendors cannot guarantee that all QR codes will print. So it's important that you probably do a pre-pro, test it right. out, see if it's gonna work. But there are some products that work better than others. So for example, products that have flat decorating areas, um, where there's no materials that have texture to them, like those are gonna be significantly better than anything sure. that's got a bump or a curve to it. Um, so things like totes, journals, notebooks, and some drinkware, uh, although the curvature tends to distort the QR code. Um, Starline has a couple products where they have a flat panel on some of the drinkware, so that's preferred. 
Um, and the smallest size that a QR code should be is one and a quarter inch by one okay. and a quarter inch. Otherwise, it won't be readable. Sure. Um, so that means printing on things like pens and other small items. Just yeah, not going to work. Other question. Um, oh, and a couple more points. There should be some adequate white space around the QR code to be read properly. Um, and then finally, all QR codes need to be printed in two colors. So you need a two color and print black right. and right. white. Um, and I, again, I'd recommend a prepro and test it both on iOS and Android phones. Awesome. So let me ask you this about the puzzle. Did you guys pre-test the puzzle QR code? Because I'm assuming that when you put that puzzle together, the QR code is not just on one of the puzzle pieces. It's probably a collection of multiple mm. pieces into one. Good question. Um, because it's a paper-based product, right? These jigsaw puzzle pieces are cardboard. Um, we didn't have any issue with it being uh, readable. Um, and we did design it so that it does stay on one piece. Oh, okay. Okay. There you go. <laughs> I, I knew there was something to that. Um, Way to I, trick me. Nice, I, nice try. I can't imagine that a, a QR code is going to work if it, there was, you know, a cut in a, in the Correct. puzzle piece. So, yeah. um, all right. So we do have, uh, I see that Jamie Johnson of oh. Paper Rich Farms. She says, appreciate Mitch's insight, extremely trusted partnership. So you're getting a shout out on LinkedIn. Now, now let's talk about social media. Um, what role can QR codes play when it comes to marketing and social media? Well, I think in marketing, you know, QR codes can be designed to get people to take any number of actions, right? I mean, really, ultimately, as marketers, we're thinking about what is the action we want somebody to take. So first of all, you can direct people to fill out a form. Mm -hmm. Second, you could get them to download a coupon or a special offer. Um, third, you could direct people to fill out like a post-event survey uh -huh. by including a QR code. Um, I, I once saw this done where someone printed a custom QR code on an insert card that then went inside one of those imprinted silicone phone wallets, uh -huh. right? So everybody got that and then they would go to the QR code to fill out the survey. Um, you can also offer like additional content. Yeah. Um, an, another clever case study is um, the folks at Chocolate Inn uh, they recommend putting a QR code on the side of the custom box in which they put their hot cocoa bomb because that leads to, so you follow that and then you've got more creative ways how to use sure. your hot cocoa bomb beyond just the, the obvious. Um, or, and this is the most basic of all, lead people to a place to learn more about your company. Sure, right? sure. Um, I mean, look at the success, Vinny. I suspect you were watching the Super Bowl. Remember Coinbase, mm -hmm. the Super Bowl ad? The QR Those code? Guys, yeah, those guys spent $14 million dollars yeah. for a one minute long commercial. The, the first thing I did when I came up, I grabbed my phone. And I think we're all conditioned to do that these yep. days. So, um, you know, their landing page for the QR code got a whopping 20 million hits in just one minute. It's crazy. Um, so, you know, many Super Bowl ads were passive branding and entertainment and humor purposes only, but these guys actually created an action step for viewers. And I think years from now, we'll be looking at that the Harvard Business School is a case study for the effectiveness of QR codes. Yeah, and sure. from what I heard, um, the site crashed. And yeah. look, if if the site crashed, yes, it, that's a bad thing, but it worked. You can honestly take a look at that and say it worked because we got so many people trying to access the site at the same time that you know that's, that's a good thing. If you had twenty proofs in people, the pudding, right? Yeah, if twenty five people logged on during a Super Bowl, you got a problem. Um, so <laughs> yeah, I mean that's a that's a great idea. I think. You know, there's a lot of opportunity to uh, also use QR codes to push people to your social media pages. If, if you want people to go there, say you're running a contest, you know, and I think about, you know, your print collateral stuff that you, you still actually print on. Like, yes, your your newsletters, your your websites, you can actually have your shareable um, social icons and people click right there. But when you have like, you know, something in the mail that has you know find us on facebook find us on twitter mm -hmm. how are you going to find them if you have a qr code you can push directly to social media um so i think there's unlimited you know opportunity there for social media and qr codes um it, i would agree i mean anytime you can avoid somebody having to type in a long url to get somewhere and the qr code boom takes them there that's yeah. a win. plus you know if you if your target audience is younger um to me i think that's a win you know and we we have these discussions all the time about the, the older generations, the younger generations, who uses what, you know, the the younger generations are going to use the technology. You know, they they, mm -hmm. they will. I'm, I'm Gen X and I use it. You know, I use QR codes. So to me, I feel like, you know, it's 50-50 with my generation. But the younger you get, the more app, app you're going to be able to take out your phone 
and press that button mm -hmm. and open up uh, a web page through a QR code. I think that like th they're hitting their stride now. Finally, you said 1994. It's been over, you know almost 30 years. It's like wow, th this is finally going to find its you know its foothold now, thanks to mm -hmm. you know technology catching up. The, I don't want to say thank you to the pandemic, but you know certainly the pandemic has hastened you know, the popularity of QR codes. So there's, there's a lot we can do with QR codes. Mm -hmm. For so, sure. Mitch, um, do you have any other case studies you want to share with us? Yeah, I actually do. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm brimming with these because it's something I've been really trying to push with my clients. Um, you know, recently we had a healthcare client who was exhibiting at an annual Blue Cross Blue Shield event and they were promoting their new service. And the service was pretty complicated. They tried to explain it to me. I thought it was really difficult. So um, I told them that I think in addition to the drinkware piece that they're producing with us, that they should put a QR code on the outside of the box that could then direct people to a better explanation of what their service was about. Just because, you, you know, when you got a two and a half by two and a half inch imprint area, there's just not much you can put in there. So right. the QR code really gives them a chance to expand upon, you know, their offerings and tell their complete story. Um, I uh, recently came across a client that wanted to do a trade show giveaway. Um, and they really wanted people to come to their booth at the show so they did a pre-mailer on a micro, microfiber cloth, which, it, by the way, is also a good surface for printing uh, QR okay. codes. And you went to the QR code. You then went to a website to register for the free gift. But then you had to go to the booth on the day of the show to pick up the gift. Oh, OK. So again, another interactive way to sure. work with clients. Um, also, Chocolate Inn has this fun product called an advent calendar. I'm sure everyone knows what an advent calendar sure. is. Um, so this one uh, organization used it as 30 days of employee appreciation. So under each of the little windows for the advent calendar was a, was a piece of chocolate, and underneath that was a QR code. And each day the QR it was a different QR code in all thirty of them. Talk about the oh, wow. logistics okay. on this, right? So each day the QR code would tell the employee what the appreciation event was that day. So come to the lunchroom for cake. Come outside for the ice cream truck. Oh, um, okay, you know, that's cool. Something like that. So I think there's lots of clever ways to integrate stuff in all the almost all the products we sell that have the surface to do that. Yeah, I think, you know, it's no surprise that we have a very creative industry here. So QR codes are a launching pad to using that create creativity and, and how you want to use them, where you want to push people. So those are some really good case studies. We had quite a number today. Uh, and I really thank you for that because, like I said, I don't think these things are going away. I think they're going to be here for a while. Um, so this has been a really great discussion on QR codes. Awesome. Uh, Mitch, thank you so much. Now, before we go and... I always end my podcast with something fun. Now, I found out that you were a dad joke aficionado, as I am. We're both dads. Um, so this is how I want to end this podcast. You and I are going to go joke for joke. And if you think it's laughable, you laugh at my joke. If it's if it's a grown dad joke, you just groan at it. All right. so, so we're going to go one for one. I'm going to let you start. Well, first of all, I have to show you that I've got this sign right here. So I'm going to smoke you today, by the way. Uh, I'm sure. I'm going to get more groans than laughs, I'm sure. All right, Vinny, you ready? How did Harry Potter get to the bottom of the hill? I don't know. Walking. JK, rolling. <laughs> oh, <come on. laughs> I hope you me? found that one on the internet and not, uh, and not uh, made that one up yourself. Woo! I like it. It was a good one. It was a good one. All right. Here's my first. I haven't spoken to my wife in seven years. Did you know that? I don't want to interrupt her. Mm, half grown, half laugh. That's well done. Well done. I told my wife that one last night. She's like, you're not going to do that yeah, one. No, I was yeah. like, yeah, I'm going to do it. Um, Vinny, have you heard about the new movie Constipation? No. Well, of course you haven't. It hasn't come out yet. <laughs> All right. I saw a smile. That's a good one. That's good. <laughs> All right, all right. Here's my next one. And if anybody has any dad jokes they want to oh boy. drop in the comments, Pandora's box. Um, go for it. And uh, you'll you know, read, read them out loud here. So, all right, here's my next one. Mitch, did you know that 97% of people are stupid? Thank God I'm in the other 5%. <laughs> that is a dad joke. You, you just <laughs> defined it right there. It's, and it's got math in it too, which is it always does. good. Right? It does. And I had to check that math because I'm not a math person. But yeah, hey, Vinny, what did the cannibal choose to eat for his last meal? Five guys. <laughs> do they have those in Philly? They do. They do. Okay, they, yeah. I, I do like five guys. Although, okay, 
got to spend extra time on a treadmill after that place. Um, all right. Mitch, did you hear that I opened up a restaurant called Peace and Quiet? Kids meals are only $150. <laughs> Oh, oh I gotta stop one. myself. Um, hey, Vinny, if two vegans get in a big fight, can we still consider that a beef? <laughs> All right, I've heard that one before. That's a good one. That's a good one. All right, Mitch, I got carded at a liquor store, and my Blockbuster card accidentally fell out. The cashier said, "Never mind." <laughs> you know, there actually is still one Blockbuster left in yes. Bend, Oregon. It's um, there's Oregon. a distributor in the Common Skew community who who actually lives in that town. I'm, I'm dying to go visit. I want to see what that last one looks like. Check them out on Twitter. They have whoever runs that Twitter account over there is is killing it. It's so funny. Right. Um, are you got any more? Because I don't know. Yeah. Why Why did the man fall into the well, Vinny? He He couldn't see that well. <laughs> That's a groaner. That's a groaner. That's a groaner. Yeah. All right. This is my last one. What co What country's capital? is growing the fastest. Ireland. Oh, no. Every day it's Dublin. Oh, well played. Well, you know, you said Dublin, so I, I have to I have to at least share a music joke about you too. So okay. did you hear about U two's lawyer? No, apparently he works pro bono. <laughs> I, did, I was gonna say something. It was going in the in the bono direction here, but but that was great. Mitch, Vinny, thank Vinny, 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 I have to share one more with you. Okay, I mean, you since okay. we both like music, let's just do one more dad joke. Ready? All right. Well, I, I have one too. Okay. What is Whitney Houston's favorite type of coordination? Hand eye will <laughs> all... Oh, wait. Sorry. <laughs> that was broken. a good one. That was a good one. That was. I'll give you that should, one. Should we end on that one? I've got one. A cheese factory exploded in France. Debris was everywhere. There was. To be or not to be a horse rider, that is equestrian. <laughs> All right, I'm out. I'm out. I'm out here, Jerry. I'm out. Done. All right, Mitch. Again, thank you so much for spending some time with me talking QR codes, having a few laughs at the expense of of everyone's dad. I think everyone's dad was the same way. I, I guess to my kids, I'm the same way. I tell stupid dad jokes. Um, but if anybody wants to get a hold of you, how can they do that? Um, uh, our website is printablepromotions.com or Mitch at printablepromotions.com. And I'm also on LinkedIn. I'd uh, love to connect with whoever wants to. Awesome. Again, this was Mitch Silver talking QR codes. I'm Vinny, and we'll see you next time on The Social Angle. Congratulations on 100, Vinny. Thanks.